Chances are while programming, you've probably come across switch statements and asked questions like, why would I ever want to use this, over if else statements, or when should I be using switch statements? And those are fair questions. Probably your first introduction to conditional logic flow was through if else statements. And for all your time programming, if else statements probably got you pretty far in building out applications. But when it comes to a switch statement, it might feel like it's an unnecessary or repetitive JavaScript feature. So in this video, I want to address those questions by explaining what switch statements are, comparing them to if else statements, and then trying to explain when you would want to use switch statements. So to jump into this video, let's take a closer look at a switch statement. So in this code block example, I have a typical switch statement. Here I'm using the switch keyword, and inside the parentheses I have a case or like an expression value. Then I have open curly braces that allows me to define my case blocks. For each case, there's a value associated with it. So if the expression value that I provided for my switch statement matches the case value, then I'll step into that case block and then execute the logic that's inside there. So in this example, I have case one and case two, and then I can run whatever logic I have inside of those blocks. There's also the default keyword, where if my case or my expression value matches none of my predefined cases, I'll just jump into the default case. We can convert this code block actually into an if-else statement to compare and contrast these two conditional logic flows. So here I have my if-else block where I have if case is equal to case underscore one, then I execute my logic, then I have else if for case two, and this can keep going on for days. But then I have my final else block where it's just like a catch-all if none of my cases match my expected values. So these two code blocks achieve the same logical outcome, which may even beg the question further of why would I want to use a switch statement over an if else statement. One of the most popular reasons for why I use switch statements is whenever I want to deal with different states and using switch statements is a lot easier to read and work with than just if else statements. But let me show you an example of this. So let's say that I create a person object and on that person object, there's a state field that has a string enum that describes the current state that the person is in. So I create a person state object that defines the different states that a person can be in, like sleeping, eating, dancing, and studying. And I'm saying that my person is currently asleep. So if I wanted to do something dependent on the person's current state, I could use if-else statements, but I actually prefer using switch statements in this case because I'm only dealing with one possible value per case. So here I have my switch statement. Inside the parentheses, I point to person.state. And I say, depending on the person's state, I want to jump into the corresponding case. So my person's current state is sleeping, so I'm going to jump into the sleeping state, where I'm going to print out the person is sleeping. You can also notice I have other cases for the other states that the person can be in, like if they're eating, dancing, studying, and more. And I also have my default case where I can just print out that the person is performing an unknown action. So here you can see that each case is only concerned with one other possible state that the person is in. With switch statements, there's no room to include other conditional values like extra booleans, integers, strings, and more. To illustrate this point even further, I'm going to convert this switch statement over to using if else. So with this code block example, you can see that I'm doing if the person.state is equal to person state.sleeping, then I'll print out the person is sleeping, then I have my else if block where person state is equal to person state eating, then I'll print out the person is eating, and this will go on until I hit my else block, where again, I just print out the catch-all statement. So the downside to this approach, despite the fact that it gives us the same logical outcome, is that it's less readable by repeating the person.state value every single time we want to make a conditional check. There's really no need for us to repeat this value if we can already reference it once inside of a switch statement. On top of that, since if-else statements can handle and and or operators, for this case, it seems really unnecessary that we're using if-else if we're just dealing with one possible value per conditional check. So for me, whenever I'm dealing with singular values that I want to check inside of conditional blocks, that's when I start using switch statements over if-else statements. So again, in cases whenever I use switch statements, I'm usually dealing with different types of state. Like I want to keep track of the state of the person object, or maybe I want to keep track of the state of my application. I always prefer using switch statements over if else statements. But one thing that I want to point out about switch statements is that they're not a complete one-to-one -one with if else statements, beyond the fact that switch statements can only handle singular values while if else statements can handle more values for conditional checks. Switch statements are also constructed slightly different from if else statements. So let me show you what I mean by this. So here again, I have a switch statement and then I have my multiple cases. The first thing that I want to point out about switch statements is that 
If you enter a case block within a switch statement, your application doesn't exit out of that switch statement by default. You'll have to explicitly provide either the break or return keyword. So for this example, for each case, I'm either returning or breaking to signify that I want to exit out of my switch statement altogether if I step into any of these cases. If I didn't provide either return or break for one of my cases, what would happen is that I would enter into the first matching case, and then once I'm done with that case, if I didn't want to return or break out of it, I'm going to continuously check the rest of my cases to see if I match any other case. And that also includes matching the default case. So what happened to me a lot when I first started using switch statements was that I would define cases, but I would never explicitly return or break out of it. So I would find myself having unexpected side effects from using switch statements because I would step into one case and then I would step into another case just because I didn't tell my code to stop looking at extra cases if I matched with the first one. So it's really important to remember to always either return or break out of cases with switch statements. Another interesting thing about switch statements is that you can create multi-cases where you place cases next to each other to signify that the logic in one case block can be accessible or accessed by multiple cases. So with this switch statement, I place three of my cases next to each other, and then I have my person stay sleeping after those first three cases. So what's going to go on here is that whenever my person's state is either eating, dancing, or studying, it's going to hop into that first case block. But if the person is sleeping, then it's going to hop into that second case block. Personally, I don't think this is as readable as just using the regular pipe symbols, but it is something that you can do with switch statements. So the big thing that I want you to take away from this video is that if you're ever dealing with state, you should consider using switch statements over if else statements. But personally, when I first started using switch statements, I felt like the hardest part was just knowing when I should be using it over if else statements. There's really no hard and fast rule when you should be using switch statements and if else statements. Personally, I use switch statements just to make my code just a little bit more readable when I'm dealing with state. But if you feel more comfortable using if else statements, then you can just keep using if else statements. But that's it on switch statements. Please let me know if you have any questions by leaving a question in the comment section below. I know for me, it took me a real minute to get comfortable and confident about using switch statements just because its syntax is a little bit different from if else statements. If you want to reach out to me on Twitter, I'm on there. I talk about JavaScript, anything in between, YouTube videos, web development, and all that kind of good stuff. Also, quick shout out if you want to contribute to the Evo API project, I'm going to leave links down in the description box below where you can sign up, start volunteering, helping out with the projects, and yeah. But with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.